Welcome back, and as I told you before, I had a surprise for you, and this is your surprise. Can you believe it? I have guests! I'm so excited! Um, we're coming to you from the Flying Needles in Williamsburg, Virginia, and I'm going to do a few introductions. If you missed it, we have a retreat this weekend on Saturday, March 31st here in town, and these are our wonderful speakers. So to my right, I have Kelly and Erin of Three Irish Girls. And then to my left, I have fabulous Marie Green and Josh RR. Cause I just, I, that name, his, his last name's throwing me and I don't want to, I don't want to embarrass myself and mispronounce it. So it's really, it's a little early here. We had somebody come in flying from a, a red eye. So we were working on our energy level for you, but we promise we have some really good things to say. So we're going to start off this morning and I'm going to do some introductions and we're going to start to my right. We'll start with Kelly right. and let you take it. All right. Okay. Hi, I'm Kelly Espen. Nice to meet you. Um, I am part of Three Irish Girls. It's Aaron and myself and our third Irish girl, since everybody asks, is our customer because you take our yarn and you turn it into something extra special. So we appreciate that. Um, I am originally from a very small town, Argyle, Minnesota. I love uh, Argyle, yes. but what a name. Like, that's a great <laughs> Barbara Artist meets Argyle. All, yeah. all meant to be, yes. So, close to Canada, North Dakota, way, way up there in Minnesota. Very small town. Um, I'm a Midwest farmer's daughter. I went to college in U of M in Morris, uh, and then I moved down to the cities and started working after college. Got married. My husband and I kept going up to Duluth, Minnesota, because we like to cross-country ski, we like to camp, we like to do all those outdoorsy things found a way to move up there, um, has since been married for 20 years, have three kids. Uh, I have a 16 year old, a 14 year old, and a 13 year old. So um, we still like to do all kinds of outdoorsy things and enjoy our time in Duluth. Well, hello everybody. I am Erin McFarland of Three Irish Girls and um, I'm originally from Duluth, graduated uh, from Duluth East and I'm my life took me more down to Minneapolis and I lived there for a good 13 years. And while I was down there, I, I went to school a little later in life at uh, St. Kate's in St. Paul and I uh, graduated with a degree in Peace and Conflict Studies. And what does that have to do with dying? Absolutely <laughs> nothing. I can imagine that. <laughs> absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, but um, with that, uh, my college career in outside, I've done a lot of traveling and studied multiple times in Ireland Yay. and um, studied abroad there for a semester and did a J term. So needless to say, I have such an affinity for that country and so it's only fitting that I have something of an Irish title in my work. But no, I study the um, conflict of Northern Ireland. That's what I kind of specialized in and hopefully, I'm hoping I was gonna do something of that Sort somewhere else, and that kind of led me after graduation to move to New Zealand. And um, they have a peace process going on, and I was hoping to get into the Ministry of Justice down there, and but it didn't turn out. <laughs> and so, but I lived there for about seven months, and while I was down there, I kind of learned of what was going on within um, Three Irish Girls as I was starting the previous owner. And um, I returned back to Duluth, Minnesota at the same time as the former owner was moving the company back to Duluth. And so that's kind of where I started and I kind of learned what she was doing. And I learned to knit at that point as well. Wow. <laughs> also important. Yeah. Yeah, so I learned to knit in New Zealand. So yeah, because I, I was just very curious and, um, and it kind of inspired me to knit hearing what she was doing. And uh, um, But anyways, I didn't really get a grasp of what was actually going on inside Three Irish Girls until I started doing it. And so um, that's when uh, Kelly and I met and uh, started working together. And, uh, and my degree's in psychology yeah. and peace and conflict studies and we were we were able to work it out. So. Yes, we were <laughs> able to work it out, yes. Uh, oh, that's really anyways. <laughs> But anyways, um, yeah, I bought the business. So we bought the business, apologies. Um, in July of 2013 and October of 2013 I found out I was having a baby <laughs> or actually January mm -hmm. and so sorry not but October. first I had a dream 
First she had a dream, I hate which I've never had these kind of weird dreams before. But I did ask Erin one day because I pictured her with a little girl with dark curly hair whose name was Rose. And I had no idea that Erin's future mother-in-law was named Rosie. Yeah. No oh, that's a little scary. I, no, <laughs> I, 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 the, the hair on my neck is yeah. up. Okay. And, so. and yeah, my daughter's middle name is Rose. I had to make some of the premonition come true. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I haven't had any since, so okay. wow. I'll let you know if I do. Yes, that means I'll be getting pregnant again. Yeah. So. <laughs> wow. Anyhow, so here I am, five months into business, <laughs> pregnant. And so we got, I got handed a lot of stuff at once, that but it all lot. worked out. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, the biggest story I think in that like kind of first year of business is that, uh, or a little over first year, uh, as Kelly and I were uh, traveling to um, Stitches Midwest and Chicago, and lo and behold, I kind of had a baby there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it's a, my baby's forever known as the Stitches baby. And so I, I'll I'll stick to that. That's really cool. Okay, but you do need you do need to clarify. It wasn't yeah. actually actually at the convention center, no. right? Okay, you need to clarify. We, we got <laughs> somewhat adjacent. We got to, to the it, hotel though. and I woke up at two o'clock in the morning and my water had broke. I was obviously there with Kelly, my business partner and yeah. soon to be birthing coach, <laughs> and a, a cousin who came to help me. And so yeah, I um, short and sweet birth. Eight hours later, I think. Uh, it was about 10, like almost before 10 o'clock that day that my daughter was born. Mm -hmm. And um, my man made it about a half an hour afterwards. And silly enough, he told me not to give birth the night before <laughs> when we talked. That was his last words to me. <laughs> and I was induced with all three of my kids. So I was like, Aaron, you're fine. You're fine. Nothing's going to happen. It. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a dream. It's all good. <laughs> So here I am having a baby, and um, these poor girls had to uh, go and set up our booth after it was all said and done. So, but yes, the, it wow. was quite the experience. Wow. But yeah, beyond that, and yeah, I just. Okay, so was she saying, hurry up and have this baby so I can go set up my booth, or was she just like being super cool and in the moment? Oh, I think, you know what? <laughs> the people kind of manning that part of Stitches Midwest took a lot of pity on those yeah. two and they were very Aww, kind and they were. Yeah. That's wonderful. yeah. All they have to say is thank goodness for zip ties. Yeah. That's uh, oh, all yeah. they yeah. fixed everything. Yay, Yay for the zip tie. <laughs> and pretty yarn. It was all good. Yes. Wow. So yeah, so but my life is in Duluth. Uh, yeah, I just um, it's a beautiful city to raise a family and I'm very fortunate to be able to have a successful business where it's safe and just and it's so beautiful. picturesque mm -hmm. and it's yes so. we're right on the tip of Lake Superior so which yes. uh, we oh. very much appreciate and so and just to clarify we're gonna say this because people say well aren't you in Wisconsin well see there's this little bay at the tip of Lake Superior that separates Minnesota from Wisconsin and it's about a mile and a half high bridge and there's a few of them that go over to Wisconsin we call it one area but Superiorites and Wisconsinites do not identify with Duluthians. So, oh, super interesting. <laughs> so we live on the Duluth side of the bridge, but our studio workspace is inside yes. Wisconsin, and we will say we are a Wisconsin business yes. for that. We share the love. Yeah, wow. we share the love. <laughs> Collaboration so, all yes. the way around. Yes, exactly. Yes. yes. What an awesome story. What an awesome story. So, Marie, why don't you take it away? Tell us a little about yourself. Uh, my name is Marie Green. I am a network designer with all of Knits is my business. Um, I live in the Pacific Northwest, which I think is where I should have always been. I was actually born in the Midwest, um, but Oregon is just, uh, it's, it's awesome. It's a, just a hive of inspiration. Um, I actually started knitting when I was a kid. I was around 10 or 11 years old. My grandmother taught me and I I, to this day, I'm just so grateful that she saw in me something that inspired her to teach me. She's mm -hmm. very into, you know, self-sufficiency and, you know, fiber arts. And um, and when she was teaching me, she is an English style knitter. And I sat down with her and, you know, I'm watching her throw the yarn. And I was like, as at 10. So I feel like this is sort of symbolic of my personality. I was like... Uh, if I need the yarn in my left hand, why, like if it needs to be over here, why can't I just hold it over here? And she was like, 
it as long as your stitches are right you can hold it however you want and that really was great because I sort of developed my own knitting style inadvertently um, that was similar to continental but also kind of I don't know not not true continental I don't know I have this like funky style but it works really well for me and it sort of inspired the rest of my knitting journey which was kind of that you're the boss of your knitting mm -hmm. and so that's what I teach my students and that's really what I try and do um, when I work with the fiber community is like empower them to feel like you're the boss of it if, if you're getting the right results you know you have a lot of wiggle room there um, yeah, you can't let the yarn or the pattern control you. No, no, yarn and the pattern are not <laughs> yes. the boss of you. Yes. I mean, well, That's actually, right. sometimes yarn thinks it's the boss of me, and that drives me crazy. <laughs> sometimes it's <clears throat> really stubborn. But, um, yeah, I over the years, I mean, my husband and I got married um, right after my first year of college, and um, have three boys, bing, 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 and so for a long time I was raising kids, and, um, and freelance writing, and then as my kids got older, I went into hospital finance project management, which is really technical. Um, lots of numbers and spreadsheets, which I love. Mm -hmm. And um, as a designer, I always feel like I'm really weird that way because I, I imagine all the other designers are like these creative forces that are like painting, <coughs> drawing, and I none of that is my skill at all. It's I, not weird, but if it is, just own your weirdness. I just I'm yeah, totally it's just it like too. who I am. And I, yeah, I just like love the spreadsheets, I love the numbers, I love the technical side, and that's what keeps design so interesting. I, um, I started my business sort of inadvertently about four or five years ago, and maybe not quite five, but I've been designing for myself my whole life, I've because I, I learned with patterns from the 40s, and there just wasn't something that was a style that I wanted to wear when I was younger, or even now. Like that, a lot of those styles don't still don't work for me. Um, and so that was really kind of how I got into designing, and then it just took off. And now this is what I do full time, and I you know design and teach. But um, but I was looking on my Ravelry patterns because I was like gosh I'm getting up there in in the designs and I was looking back through old ones and there is this design that is following me forever that it will not leave me and it's a Barbie twin set because that's what I learned to knit was these little tiny Barbie twin sets when I was a kid <laughs> and in 1998 I put out a pattern very roughly wow. um, for a Barbie twin set on an old website that I don't even think is there anymore it before a, I think now it's called knitting on the net before that, it was about .com. Before that, it was the mining company back in the 90s. Wow, so three iterations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I put this little Barbie twin set pattern on there and a few other little things, but I never really thought about them again until I was building a, a business and using Ravelry. And someone had taken, oh my gosh, God bless them, whoever they are, <laughs> a picture of their own version of it's this red, Barbie twin it? set. I, I think it's green. Green, okay. I don't know who took the picture, but I'm just like, oh my gosh. It's, <laughs> and it's on there, and it's like, it's so, and I contacted Ravelry, I was like, can we make that go away? Can we like not make that part of my business? But now I'm like, well, you know, it, it's reality. It's part of your, back, your weirdness, right? It's part of my weirdness. It's back in 1998, I put out a Barbie twin set pattern, nice. and I cannot yeah. vouch for the pattern. Like, I have no idea if it's, I haven't looked at it in a long time. I have no idea, like, what the caliber is. I'm sure it's <coughs> pretty darn basic. How old were you in 1998? Um, 23. You're 23? That's just, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's, yeah, but I... To watch you grow from a Barbie twin set yeah. to where you are now, uh, that's just wonderful. It's, it's amazing. So, yep, so I still, now it's just like, this is what I do. And I've got three grown boys. And so now you need a pattern that's the adult Barbie. I know, know, right? It's like a couple of circles. All right. I know, right? I'll, we'll make the green yarn. Okay. Yay. I mean, maybe, maybe we could talk about that green option. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, gray. Maybe gray? It's got to be green? All right. You gray, I know. Man, you. I know. They're going to really, like, force me into color. I yeah. feel it. There's an intervention yep. coming. Yeah, totally. it's, it's already, like, starting to happen. They're dragging you into the rainbow, sister. Yeah. They're like, yeah. come on. Just just dabble. Just, like, just, I mean, I am knitting some color right now, yeah, but it's, like, a one color. Yeah. So I, okay. this is so much color. And it's, like, I love it when I see it. But if you look at my designs, they're very like monochromatic, maybe a second color for the most part. I don't get very brave. I, I like texture and I like clean lines. And so 
I get, I have like color fear, <laughs> but, color but fear. I'm so inspired when I- She I says to the dyers, color fear. I have color fear. <laughs> We're going to remedy that. They're going to fix me. They're going to fix me. I totally know it. Yep. <laughs> and in the doses, not all at once, good doses. Right. Yeah, like just, you have to ease me into it. Baby I don't steps, think it can totally. happen all at once. Yeah. We have, we had an uh, employee who was like that. Like we're gonna work on it, and it's like I I I scold I like grounded her from gray. I said, Oh what? You, you cannot oh, can use you gray. Imagine? No. You're not oh. gonna use gray for your next project. You have oh. to find something else. And I was very happy she chose um, this really pretty plummy purple pink. It's called Summer Magic, and it's just like there you go. It's not loud. It's deep and sultry, but it's not gray. It's not, it's not, not gray. gray. Grounded from gray. We love gray. Don't get me wrong, but there are other colors. Yeah. <laughs> there are other colors. There are other colors. I know it. Oh, that's so funny. All right, Josh. Okay. Your turn. My turn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm Josh, and I am the designer behind Geometrix Designs on Ravelry. And, and pronounce oh, your last name for everybody. Oh, so it's it's Rick's Robinson. There we go. Um, which is great because like when I was flying yesterday, I was checking in for my flight. Like I was at the gate, and the gate agent is like, "Welcome," and they ignore me. They're like, "Welcome, Mr. Smith," and like or Josh or whatever. And she's like, "Uh, okay." And I was like, "It's okay." Like I don't Just expect like, you. To, I don't expect ahead. you to say my last name. Like don't worry. <laughs> Um, Mr. Josh. Yeah, welcome, Mr. Josh. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I I uh, grew up in Minnesota, born and raised, and I lived outside of the cities, and now I live in Minneapolis, and um, grew up in a small German town where I came from, and uh, very uh, I have a very large family, um, and so it was like very much like we were out there and just like to our own thing, and so that being said, I was also homeschooled, and so homeschooling involves a lot of library time. Um, just because like they have a great resource and we can use it. So um, I was used to using a library and that's how I got started on my creative career. Um, it's just the idea of, so, so creativity runs with my family and everyone in my family has a niche. Um, so like my grandmother on my dad's side is like handy woman. She does like everything and she, but she, she doesn't have her own thing because she does all of it. So you can just ask her like, what do you think about this? And she'll give you an answer. Um, my mom's uh, mother is a crocheter quilter and she like she's the type of crocheter that uses um, sewing thread and makes beautiful filet crochet mm -hmm. oh and like gosh. in her house I kid you not there is a three foot um, filet crochet uh, wall hanging of the Virgin Mary because they're Catholic mm -hmm. oh my and gosh. it's it's framed on beautiful pink satin and it's just like this is incredible and mm -hmm. she would also um, does sculptural crochet with that filet crochet oh. and Donate wow. them to the church. Like they do, like auctions of like three foot tall angels. Wow. I'm just like, she's insane. Wow. She's an amazing crocheter. Like her crochet, and she's always telling me, like she's so sweet. She's always like, you're just so much more talented and more creative, and like you're more skilled than I am. I'm like, Grandma, you've been crocheting for forty years. Mm -hmm. Like you know, and she she didn't believe me. And like I remember sitting there when I was learning to crochet, and she's crocheting and. She loves blanket making, so she also donates afghans all the time. And we have like everyone has at least three in my family, um, and so she is sitting there crocheting, and we're talking, and she crochets literally a foot square, and like that's seven colors. She changed them and everything. She wasn't even thinking about half an hour. And I was like, yeah. I think you're pretty talented. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so Reality every, check. Yeah, so so everyone in my family has that creative energy. My mom is a cross stitcher, and she knows how to quilt, but she, uh, quilt. she's a quilter, and she knows how to crochet. She doesn't like crocheting. And so I grew up learning to cross stitch was my first. And then we learned how to sew buttons because my mom was like, none of my children will ever have to go to a tailor to sew a button on. She was like, this is really pointless in life. So I know how to sew buttons on of every style, um, which has been the most useful thing I've ever learned. Oh yeah, oh, save you $12 like, from the dry cleaner every and single I, and time. I worked in, I worked in um, clothing was my first job. And so the, the amount of clothing they would try to throw away because they're missing a button. And I'd just be like, give me the button. Yeah. And it was like, I was like, that. Bam, there you go. <laughs> and then they were like, what magic is this? And I'm like, it's a button. Oh, yeah. It like guides you how to society. sew it. Anyway, um, so. shawls with button action yeah. happening. I know I should do that. Yeah. I should do like a shawl. Oh, totally should. <laughs> oh, see I should. tone, see tone. Right? All right, so I have to interrupt yeah. you. Let's tell everybody. When you said you had a big family, but I didn't realize, you need to tell us how big your family is. Uh, so I am the oldest of 14, <coughs> um, and we're all from the same parents. None of us are adopted. There's no twins. Just, just 
Fourteen. Full on kids. Fourteen. <laughs> That's amazing. How old is your youngest sibling? My oldest, my youngest sibling is uh, a year and a half. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, yeah. So I grew up in that environment of being very self-sufficient because when you're the oldest, you're basically a third parent. Of, oh yeah. Of yeah. That. So you don't. You don't really necessarily have the ability to ask mom and dad for help as much. Right. Like you can, and they they would do the best they can, but they're also dealing with like all the younger ones who don't aren't self sufficient. So um, that that drove me to. So I was like self taught as a homeschooler. Even like my mom would be like, "Here's your assignments for the week. Do what you want." And I would always finish it on Thursday, so I would have a three day weekend yeah. every weekend, and it was knitting weekend. Mm -hmm. So this is after I learned to knit. Like. Right, right. Um, but anyway, so that's how I, I was so self-sufficient. So when I wanted to find my creative spirit and like calling, um, I would just go to the library and browse the nonfiction how-to section, basically of like painting. Um, I tried macrame, and that was like no. <laughs> yeah. That was like literally the first time I, I encountered a craft in which I was like, this is not. No. I feel like macrame people should just decide that. I feel like I feel like it like I feel like people are like oh macrame and like I know I know I see it coming back too and I'm just like I know. Oh. like no. no um so I learned that I learned not craft because I was like well if I don't like macrame I'll learn practical not work just to like round yeah. off that thing yeah. not that I remember much of it I just kind of like make up knots as I go like it's easier that way <laughs> um, and then I learned how to do like origami and all other sorts of things hey wait I thought you were gonna bring us some like a thousand paper cranes that's true yeah. weren't you that's gonna true. do that I didn't have any paper in my hotel room <laughs> all right. now I'm gonna hook you up with some paper all right so we'll send them the paper with you we want a thousand cranes tomorrow okay that's 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 um, so anyway, I, I learned origami. I really liked origami. I like the geometry of it, um, but it's not very a practical thing. Like it is for for a craft and a hobby. It is, but like, what are you gonna do with origami? There's no, the, like, yes, there's a great movie now that origami does save the world, but that doesn't happen in real life. Yeah, right. So <laughs> anyway, so I learned. Uh, so I eventually got to the knitting section, and I got to that way because my sister got a learn to knit kit for Christmas from my grandmother, and it had like really crappy yarn and needle set, but it was. Is effective and I, and I picked it up and I'm the type of person that brings people into my passion always so when I got into tea all my friends now drink tea like crazy and they like curse me for it but it's okay um, so I do that with everything in life so I brought my sister in because my sister and I are really close and I was like we are gonna learn to knit we are gonna learn to knit and um, I've always been the ideas man of the two of us she's like okay cool let's do this um, she's like it's fine um, she's the grounding one though whereas I'm just like the ideas person uh, but anyway so I teach her how to knit we're learning to knit and eventually we get to the point that I master knit stitch and I cannot figure out purling for the life of me. And so being the resourceful person that I am and having the access to the library, I was like, we're going to the library and I literally walked up to the shelf and was like, I think these books are about knitting. <laughs> so we're just going to like take these. And then um, in my family, there was a book limit because of how many kids there are. Sure. And so, oh. like, only, so my mom made a rule of like, you can only get this many books. And very smart because there was a lot of books that were lost in that house. I'm sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure one day they will at the excavate at the house and be like, there's this random library right. book. And what right. is this? <laughs> Usually you always find it after you pay mm -hmm. the fee. After yes. You yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, yeah. So oh, after right. a couple of instances of that, there was a book rule. Um, so I grabbed as many as I could take. and I, but I, So I grabbed them all off the shelf. I was looking through and I was like, well, this stays more like a pattern book and I need, I literally need to learn how to purl. And I think by book three of my, I think I had, I was allowed to get more books because I was really good with my books. Oh, yeah. I was responsible. Like, responsible. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, I got 10 <laughs> books. And I think by book three, I was like, I've got this. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do not remember for the life of me what book it was that taught me Pearl Stitch, but it was really helpful. But you're like, thank you, random book. Yeah. Yes, and it was like really yeah. like, it laid everything out because like, um, my, we didn't have internet access in our house, we didn't do television that much, so I would never think to go online for this. And it was like right before the YouTube knitting existed. And it's kind of like you were, even though you are younger than some of us, even though we're all super young, um, yes. it's it's kind of like how we grew up because we didn't have access to the internet yeah, and, yeah. you know and so I can relate to that because I was handed these little booklets from the 40s and then my grandma lived out of state so it's like she teaches me hands me these booklets and that's all I'm left with and then you're like okay library I hope you have what I yeah. need yeah. I hope you have what I need yeah, yeah so that was, that was how I learned today it's like from that and then my first project um, I started with seven stitch scarf um, Garter stitch because I, I at that point like even though I learned purling I was like purling is not my favorite thing and it, to this day like purling is 
No. So many people diss on purling, but I think it's the I, style of knitting. I've passed a purling. I, I, yeah, I, 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 like that. I hate yeah. purling. I hate purling. I hate it. Hate yeah, it. The, I hate it. I'm definitely in that boat. So, but I was going to knit the whole skein. It was like 300 plus yards of like acrylic. Oh, gosh. And, uh -oh. And, I, and I was like, I'll just knit this whole thing. Because like that was my first like ambition yeah. in knitting, I would say. <laughs> and I uh, got about three feet and I was done. And I ended up just binding it off like really tight too. Because like that, oh. I was learning how to bind off. Cause yeah, I, the I rigid just, bond off that we I, all go through. The rigid one. And I was like, no. And so I ended up like having it. And I think one of my siblings took it and turned it into like a, a dog leash. Oh, for their stuffed dog. Cool. That's, That's really just, cute. Just like drag him around the house. And I was like, with their Barbie. Right? It's, yeah, yeah. And, like it's very useful. Like go for that. And then I decided like I would jump into one of those library books that I grabbed, which was all about um, shawls. And so like that's where it started. And um, I said that a great pattern is um, it's like Day Day Flower by Barbara Walker. I'm familiar with that. And it's a circular lace shawl, and it has uh, both mock cabling and real cabling and um, lace. Wow. And it's charting. And so I was like, oh, this looks like a great project. And so I picked up, I got the right needle. I matched the needle to the yarn. Cause I was like, that's how this works. Like you just match like what the yarn label says to the needle size. So it was an eight and worsted weight acrylic um, red heart. Wow. And I was like, this is gonna be great. I was gonna knit for my sister as like a surprise gift. Um, and and she, she was gonna love it. I knew she would. And. Um, <laughs> I started it and I got to the point where I was like, I literally do not know what I'm doing right now. And so I put it down and I'll come back to it for the next two years randomly. Like I would do something else and just be like, get more comfortable and build up my skill set. So in between learning that whole shawl, I learned how to do color work. I learned how to do tarja. I learned how to do entrelac. Cause I was like, what is entrelac? And this is like when entrelac was really popular too. Yeah. Um, and like in all, it was in every book. Everyone's like, look at entrelac. And like, I remember learning it and being like, this is not uh, worth it. <laughs> like it's a beautiful technique, but it's so time consuming. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I, I learned all these things. And, I, and that shawl, I really look back to as first off, it started my shawl knitting um, bug. And the, but it also taught me how to read knitting, which taught me how to design basically to like, cause if you, if you know how to read your knitting, you know how to, you have to learn how to fix it yes. right. because you're visually looking at it. And I'm very much a visual learner. So like for me, that was, that was the whole thing. And I ended up, using that piece and like obviously it didn't block out really well but there was a lady in my fa my family's church who was really petite and like skeleton type of like frame right and she was always cold so it was perfect because oh. it was super heavy and dense yeah. and she could just like Warm. wear it and yeah. it, was, it was small too because it yeah. didn't block out to what it was supposed to the barbie sized <laughs> it was just like <laughs> yes. it was like a very like, pretty much like the size of that table i feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. it was just like okay yeah. but it was perfect for her and like mm -hmm. i loved that um but yeah so that's how it all happened. I think it's amazing too that we're sitting in a yarn shop, we're surrounded by like these gorgeous yarns and we're sitting here with dyers and so we have this, I, there, I think that we sometimes forget like how valuable the, the yarn is to the experience mm -hmm. and to the, the final product because absolutely like doing some, all that time and then it and was, it was like, crunchy like and stiff and you know when crunchy I, and crunchy stiff. and stiff, oh my gosh, it I like mean, rips my hand apart does. now, I don't even mess with it No, anymore. but I grew up with yarn I had to go to True Value Hardware Store mm -hmm. and they oh, yeah. had like a shelf on the bottom with four colors of like Bernat pastels with like this little silvery thread through it oh. and that's like all oh, I had yeah. you know I didn't even know good wool and good yarn was out there anywhere and it's but it's amazing the time you put into something and then it's this oh you know so <laughs> there's something so great about like the right you know, using beautiful products and well, beautiful nice that we all graduate up to that. <laughs> we do. Yes. We, I think we all have a little red heart in our closet. Of course. Yeah. We did, we did it's that. very useful. That's what I started I with, too. I, uh, yeah. I, mean, I, learned, yeah. I learned through a community ed class, and I, I feel that you have to have a little bit of stubbornness to really stay with a craft like this. And I took the class with a friend of mine. After my daughter was born, I decided I was going to learn how to knit. And we would just joke because, I mean, my first project, it was a scarf and the edges were like this. It was horrible. And we would talk about how it was supposed to be all, all relaxing and not, it wasn't yeah. the first time. Like, and we I would be like, relaxed. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just not, yeah, not good. Oh my gosh, it's so But true. you have to start somewhere. You do, you, you start do. somewhere. And uh, I think if once it grabs you, you just graduate up to really awesome, beautiful designs. Oh, and it is so addictive. Mm -hmm. I. I feel like non-knitters think that's bizarre that mm -hmm. we would say that, but like once mm -hmm. you get that bug, it's impossible yeah, to deny. It like it, is it like so becomes consuming. a part of you. It is. It you is. can't stop yourself from seeing everything and being like, I can make that. I can 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can make that. I can't <laughs> justify buying something yet in a shop. It's like, I can make that. I can make, I, I that. Can make that. I wasn't yeah. the person yeah, yeah, yeah. who's like, when, when you're like out in public and you see someone sweater, you're like, where'd you get your sweater from? Do you mind if I take a photo of it? I yeah. have asked that question oh, yeah. more yeah, than like, yeah. I don't even know how many yeah. times. Where it's just like, Mm, I like really this. like that. I really yeah. like this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. So speaking of things and that we're wearing, okay, we're gonna start talking about the things that we're all wearing today. So Josh, you want to start? Okay. Um, I brought one of my favorite pieces. Um, this is called um, Typhoon. Oh, I love it. Oh, look at this. Um, so oh, that's fun. Typhoon. Um, it's actually. So this is the one piece that I love because it looks perfectly color changed, like all the color changes blend up. And people never believe me, but this is self-striping yarn. What? Um, yep, it is self-striping sock yarn because I, I love self-striping sock yarn with a passion, but I hate knitting socks. Yeah, I don't. I don't um, love knitting socks. Socks either. to me are very yeah, like I love that I have lots of people in my life who knit socks and they knit socks for me. Mm -hmm. I feel very blessed yeah. because I love knitted socks, but I hate knitting them. Me too. Um, and why do you hate knitting them? I honestly find them tedious because yeah. like, your number one pattern is your spiral, your mystic right? spiral. So the, that sock pattern came to be because um, one of my friends is a very fierce businesswoman who's like, you are designing a sock pattern for my club. <gasps> and I was like, cool. So, so I have a sock pattern and that's the only sock pattern that I will knit because I, I really enjoy it because all of a sudden you're at the heel and then you're at the leg and you're at the, it's like yeah. really fast. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I love that because like I get, I'm entertained by it, but yeah. that's the only sock pattern I've ever made it through. But I had I bought a bunch of self striping sock yarn because I, I can't resist the siren call of it. So then I had a bunch of it lying around, and I wanted to do something, and I'm a shawl knitter, so I, I had to come up with an idea to use the self striping yarn in a sock, or in a shawl, I mean, and not a sock. And so uh -huh. that's how the shawl came to be. And it's actually the first um, shawl design with self striping, and then I did a whole collection of it this last summer, which mm -hmm. I just finished. Um, and there's uh, seven pieces in there, but they're all they all use self striping sock yarns. Amazing. Wow. And so awesome, because I think a lot of people are drawn to that, but not everybody does like it. Exactly. Right. And I've had a lot of people, I had someone who messaged me, and she's like, I went gung-ho, I bought a bunch of self-serving sock yarn because I was going to take a sock knitting class, learn to knit socks, and then it was like, it's not for me. And then yeah. you knit one, you're like, damn it. And, she was, she, and so she was like, I have all this yarn, and it was just going to sit there, and I was thinking about selling it, but now that these shawls came out, thank you. And so like I was like, thank you. That's why I designed this, because I have a full bin of self striping sock yarn. Right. Wow. And it's like, one of my best friends, she dyed this yarn, and she's also the person who made me design socks for her too. I do. I love that. Um, <laughs> and so she's she's amazing and her colors are beautiful and I can't resist her yarn yes. and um, so it's just like I had a bunch of it lying around. So I ended up designing this with her as a collaboration piece and then um, it started everything and, and it was just like finding, it was a it was a designer challenge to myself. Like mm -hmm. how can you use a self-striping sock yarn to the extent that it's still a self-striping sock yarn and not like fading out into right. like uh, variegated. And um, the thing I love about these shawl, like this whole shawl collection, um, is that the self striping. I have, I brought three other ones for to show off at the retreat. Um, they're all different shapes. Uh, but the cool thing about it is you can use a gradient for the bands. You can use a variegated. You can use any of those crazy yarns that you don't know what to do with, because you can use it in the band and it, and it changes and it's small enough that you can start getting pooling in a variegated. Um, and I've seen like almost a plaid effect too in what someone in one not? with a variegated yarn. And I was like, because I know. I know a lot of people buy variegated yarn. I'm one of those people who will buy it and then it sits there because I can't control how yeah, the variegated works. Exactly. And that's yeah. when I get really irritated. Um, but I love it. Like you're drawn to it. So I wanted yeah. to do that. So I um, actually did one with two gradients going opposite directions. And like you can do all sorts of things with it. That's fun. Yeah. So this is Typhoon. That's wonderful. Before we go to Marie, yeah. I know you released a pattern yesterday. I did. I released um, uh, 42 degrees. It's a new pattern that uses. Um, 10 half skeins of yarn, approximately, and um, it's like a gradient, and it's up on sale this weekend for $5. All right. All the way through the second, so it's like an Easter gift, too. That's awesome. Yeah. And it is a beautiful rainbow because? Uh, it's a beautiful rainbow, um, but the yarn was dyed beautifully, but then um, the, pa the name comes from the fact that you can only see a rainbow at 42 degrees. Yeah. Which I like, that's why that's the name. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely a nerd when it comes to naming stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, yeah. So like this whole collection that's um, Typhoon is a start. All of them are T words that oh. relate to weather or water. So do you have um, a tsunami? I have a tsunami. I brought okay. tsunami. I love tsunami. I have tsunami, tidal, uh -huh. um, torrential, uh, tremor, oh. and I have twister. Wow. And there's one more. What is it? 
going through my head like what they look like. There's one more, but there's seven of them. And so like someone was like, oh, is the next one gonna be tea related to? I was like, you caught on to that <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> So clever. So um, but yeah, so there's, there's that whole collection is on Ravelry too, and it's it's been doing really well because a lot of people they love the effect of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's I'm now yeah, I'm all of a sudden like I'm gonna go check those out. Yeah, smart. Because yeah. I have a couple of self striping sock yarns. And I used to knit socks. I don't mind them, but I want to knit what I wear. Yeah. And I d no one gets to see the socks hardly, true. you know. It's and true. I just love sweaters. So, yeah, I, but I also like accessories. I don't usually knit them because I want to knit sweaters all the yeah, time, but now I might. I'm well, going to go check those out. You self striping, you don't have to worry about your color fear because you just pair with the solid. I just and you're do, good to go. and then I'll be fine. I'll, <laughs> That's be awesome. I'll survive. That's awesome. <laughs> And now we have a brand new pattern coming out at the retreat that Josh also is knitting right worked, now. Is actually knitting. <laughs> he got here and he started but catching. But not for the first time. Right. Right. He's this not making it up right, right. now. No. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm making it up before I teach it tomorrow. It's fine. <laughs> it's going to be great. Uh, no, it's Oscillate, and it's a beautiful shawl knit with Three Irish Girls yarn, and oh, it's it's beautiful. It, it turned beautiful. out so well. And we're not showing it to you. No. Nope. You know, we're just keeping it. You can see it, like, here. This you, one yeah. looks like. Yeah, that's the end of it. There you go. And then, but you'll see lots of it on my Facebook page. And Instagram more to yeah. come so yes yeah all right Marie we had a little bit of conversation about your neckwear we, we have to talk uh, about your neckwear I know the, right. the feature is behind us but we have to talk about your neckwear um, I did not knit this and I don't know the name of it and I don't even know what your it is <laughs> I was again, wondering if it's like drop and falls maybe I I have this group of fiber friends and I'm really fortunate to live in an area where the fiber community is so rich and very like there's so many of us it's almost maybe it's almost a bad thing but there's just so many fiber friends to have and so some of us like do little swaps with like our stash yarn and the last one they brought hand knits that they were like oh this doesn't fit me or I just don't really wear this if anybody wants it and I didn't realize we were doing a clothing swap part so I didn't bring any clothing things to swap but they're like just go in and look and I found this and I was like oh, these aren't even colors I would normally wear but it was like really big and it's kind of like I don't know if it's worsted or DK so it's Looks really yeah, I mean, good on you. And honestly, I wear it all the time, and I'm like, this is so sad that I don't even know the pattern, don't know the yarn. That is really I love funny. It. So that's what I'm wearing. Um, I'm also wearing my wreath court. <gasps> oh, Pockets. all right, we're getting the back. Yeah, look at that. Look at that cable down the back. It's just beautiful. beautiful. Um, because and this one, gosh, it's so darn wearable because it's just it's not too hot. Yeah. You know, and it's open in the front, and so and the pockets. I mean, I'm just like, yeah. I'd sell my kingdom for a pocket. Mm. Like, I just <laughs> love, a po I love a good pocket. It is so hard to find pockets for women in clothing. Mm -hmm. It makes yeah. me absolutely well, crazy. Well, I think it's also partly, you know, because sweaters are my specialty, I think a lot about wearability because that's, like, yeah. so important to me. I mean, I, I feel like pockets have a tendency to sometimes land in the wrong place. And especially as women, like we don't want to don't accentuate want right hips no. or no. something. So I find that, you know, part of the reason I think there aren't a lot of pockets is fiber, you know, yarn can be kind of dense and you add a pocket and it's even more dense. Mm -hmm. And where it goes can, you know, be a problem. But I'm so focused on the wearability factor and the practicality factor. I want people to have a result that's not only fun to make, but really wearable. Like they can actually get a lot of use out of it because that's a lot of time investment and a lot of money invested. And yeah. you don't want to knit yeah. it and then never and wear it. Just, like, yeah. I, years ago, before I was you know, designing as a business, I, I found this pattern that was all cable-y, bobbly, and it looked really fun to make. And I was like, oh, I'm going to knit this. I think it was called the Braided Writing Jacket on Ravelry. I don't even know who designed it. So I knit the whole thing, and it was really fun. And in the end, I was like, yeah, I am never going to wear this. No. This bobbly, oh, it, like that no. was not right for me to wear. So right. I, it, Beautiful it, to look it, at. It was, and it was really fun to knit, yeah. but it made me change my person, like my, my approach to knitting. And it, I sort of transferred from, would this be fun to make to, I want to have a good time making it, but I want to love wearing, wearing it. it. And so now that component is like way high on my list for anything I knit and anything I design. Well, do you guys, as designers, do you always think about what you would want to wear, or do mm -hmm. you have to kind of push yourself to think I, about other? I always like to describe myself as a very selfish designer because mm -hmm. everything I'm designing is for me, mm -hmm. and you, you and, and most people like what I like I'm wearing because yeah. like I am I'm basically an accessory designer, and for me it's like I want to add this piece, and I have these beautiful yarns, and how can I show it off, and and wh what would I would I wear this? Mm -hmm. Like that's my main question because I feel like if 
like, I always tell people that fashion is 90% confidence. Like, it's, mm-hmm. there, there, yeah. it's 10% what you're actually wearing and 90% really of personality. True. Be the boss of your own knitting! Yep. Oh, and I feel the same about design. Yeah. Like, if I'm if I am mm-hmm. 90% confident what I'm wearing, as because as I model my stuff, too, and, yeah. and, and, and I, I want to speak, this is my brand. Right. So if I'm 90% behind it, yeah. the rest is fine. Absolutely. Oh, and I think for true. me, I, I mostly set out to design with myself in mind, but um, there are times where a yarn doesn't want to be what I think it should be and so it becomes something else Mm -hmm. and it may or may not be exactly my style but it resonates with people that like my patterns you know so and because we all have different things we're looking for some people don't like pullovers some people don't like cardigans and so they can kind of find but I I really try to set out to always design something that I would want to wear Mm -hmm. and and like you I model all my stuff so it's like I have to practically think about like how is this going to go on my body and what am I going to wear it with and um so, yeah. Yeah, as dyers, we sometimes we have to challenge ourselves because Erin and I can find ourselves going towards brighter colors mm-hmm. almost all the time. So some some days we're like, okay, we can only use this, this, and this, mm-hmm. and you need to, and we'll both die with it. We will both make things that are totally different from each other. Mm-hmm. And, but we found some really happy accidents from it. We've also made some shame yeah. skeins. Which we call <laughs> yeah, yeah, shame skeins. <laughs> Not, not for us, but, you know, somebody out there would probably love it. I think it, but that it challenge is great. Like mm-hmm. the, and that's how I feel sometimes with certain yarn that comes to me. It's mm-hmm. like, this is an adventure. I get to push myself out of the box. And, right, yeah. Um, yep. But speaking of, of yarn oh, yeah. and yes. designs let's, and things. Let's bring her forward. This may not be out of my box at all. This is my exact box. I'm like, this is your <laughs> real house. This is your house. House right this here. Is your core. This is your yes. strategy. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like certain things come out of you, and you're like, I can't believe I made that. This, I'm like, I totally believe that I, because this is exactly what I love gray and this gold. This is the Three Irish Girls yarn, Yay. which um, when I thought about this design and, and reached out to them for the yarn um, to, to have this launched for this weekend. Um, I had a different idea in mind, so I was like, I want, this is the Jazz Age, and this is, this gold color is the Guinness, and um, I was like, oh my gosh, those colors are great, and so I, but I got the yarn, and it just totally spoke to me in a different direction, so I went with it, and just the texture, the kind of graphic use of color, this is Petra, by the way, um, on sale, 15% off, no code needed on my Ravelry shop through April 6th, I don't know when this is being released, but if it's before then. Um, but oh yeah, this just, but what's funny is every time I knit a sweater, even if it's get, like this turned out great, but partway through before blocking and before I'm all the way finished, I start to, to think, oh, this is never going to work. What was I doing? Oh no, Mm-mm. this is a terrible idea. And I sometimes have to just push through and like trust that mm-hmm. it's going to be okay. And I was so worried up here because I was like, oh no, maybe it's too busy. And the needles, when it's all scrunched up, you just can't. Yeah, you yeah. really you know? can't. And then when I finished, I was like, wait, this is amazing. Awesome. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. You know, for, for my style. Like, this would be a style I would wear and, you know, absolutely. And so, and my son, well, I have three sons, but my 22-year-old, I was worried about these color block sleeves because I was like, is that too funky? And he's like, it's totally dope. I was like, oh, all right. Yeah. You made it in. I guess I was you like, okay, in. I guess right. it's good. But yeah. I also feel like your yarn was so inspiring to me. So I really just wanted to bring attention to that because, you know, sometimes I feel like I have a good idea, but it has to marry with the fiber mm-hmm. and the, your use of color and just the way the skeins felt. It was such a dream to work with. And I'm sure you find that as well. Like yeah. the right yarn, it just totally like lights you on fire, and right. you just so every stitch isn't like no, torturous. No, it was you just so that. every mm-hmm. part of it was like I just don't ever want this to end. I mean, I do, but I don't. Because <laughs> now this is I, the Adorn Lux. Three it's the Adorn, Adorn Lux, Lux, which, mm-hmm. yeah. which, which is fifteen percent nylon, mm-hmm. yeah, right. which is so great, especially for sweaters. I mm-hmm. mean, people think of that for socks, but I have to say, when you're knitting a sweater, it's gonna get a lot of wear. It's gonna yeah, be rubbed right. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And so I I really like to use sock yarn for sweaters Mm because I love the lightweight anyway, but it just holds up so well. We love our Adorn Lux. It's milled exclusively for us, and it takes color really beautifully, which is why we... That yarn is yarn itself, the mill that we use, their micron count on all their wool is a nice low micron count, and that's what you want. That's what makes it so soft. Mm -hmm. And so that's, it's like if you don't want to hold it, and squeeze it to your face, mm-hmm. that is the test because of that is the yarn. test of yarn weight. I mean, you know. As a oh my gosh. Woman, if it's like this, 
you know if, that if, if we don't like, like it, if we don't like it based on our face, we don't have it in our shop. Yeah, yeah. you have to have it. We're a tactile yeah. people. Like, there really yeah. is. And like the whole knitting the community. Yeah. 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 Like, I would say my favorite thing is, so I, I used Adorn Lux for the, um, the oscillate shawl and knitting with it, it's funny because it's called Lux and I'm like, there's really no luxury fiber in here, but it feels like cashmere. Like, like, it's like, yeah. That's this is thing. amazing. Our <laughs> Glen Haven, which is oh. an 80 10 10. <laughs> yep. And oh, this, when you dye it up, it's hard to tell the difference. No, you absolutely. really like an yeah. experienced toucher as ourselves when we're doing this to help. It's like, which one? Uh, 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 and you have to close your eyes and physically feel it. You can't, it's very hard to feel the difference. Yeah. So. It, feels, it feels super luxe. And like you, I was like, well, I'm not sure why it says luxe because it doesn't have like some fancy, mm -hmm. but it feels like it, it's it's really it's yeah. it, it is luxury, period. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's it beautiful. Yeah, it really is. And it makes gorgeous sweaters like this. <laughs> and so, and I love how when you too. can go anywhere in yarn shop or a stitches or anywhere and this is socially acceptable to yeah. come up and yeah. cut We're like, what is in this? The middle, yeah. of, in the middle of the restaurant, I'm touching Kelly last night. I'm like, oh, and, and her husband, like looking at me. I'm like, oh, her husband's so like, smart. I don't know if you should do that. <laughs> I think it's also cool, like, with accessories, too. Like, can I see that? And they take off, they're like, try it on. Yeah. Do whatever you want with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 so funny. We're friendly people. Yeah. We are. We are. OK. What are you wearing? Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. yes well, you're well, going you to have to talk, talk about, about this. Okay. So um, I, the retreats this weekend, and they brought in three Irish girls. Everybody brought surprises. This is one of the three Irish girl surprises. So pretty. Sorry, it's coming, Marie. Sorry. All right, <laughs> take it away. Where is it? So this is our version of the Speckle and Pop Shell by Stephen oh, West. Look at it's it. It's really fun. So he did a great job of integrating like a fade with chevrons and like just some different semi-solids here. Is anyone surprised I'm not breaking out in color hives yes. right now? <laughs> 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 like, oh, oh, would you like to try it on? <laughs> I was kind of like going to suggest, like, maybe I'll wear that with the one hands and just like, wow everyone with this color. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, this is great. You're going to be saying, oh my god, I love this. I know. I know. I, I know. I'm actually, it's... The more I look at it, the more I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> this will be the weekend that Marie is like, this changed my life. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I like, you know, I, and then you get home and you don't have it as shawl and you don't know why. And it, right. you know, like when you go, like you're in an urban area and you see really good graffiti. This is like <gasps> yarn graffiti. Yes. 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 Oh it. my it gosh, is. that's it's a just, great it's analogy. It is. It's yarn and graffiti. so it's like, like they just say, just make your eye move along the shawl, but just the way that we, mm -hmm. what we, our decision was that you know, our pop colors were gonna be bright that would stand out against it, um, but- Still work with each other. It would work with each and other. I think I love this piece because like, it shows like what happens when the background gets darker and like, yeah. and, like how they meld and yes. It's, yes. it's beautiful. It is so, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So um, what the customer this weekend will be getting because we did it for this event is um, we have little mini skeins of the semi-solids, which will include catamaran, highlighter, blue Hawaii, jelly shoes and uh, day glow and then you mix it with three full skeins mm -hmm. um, for the like fade part and so we used I would die for you creme de la creme and that last blue one on the end is bright like big city but it can be anything you, you can, can do choose anything. your own adventure yeah there. Oh, I love it. so that's choose why we decide adventure. so if you don't like these you can do something else mm -hmm. but then these little bits we have the you still kits. have the you still yeah. have the so you can build your own. Part. We want right. people to make their choices. I know a lot of people oh. like I like how it's knit. I want the exact thing, but we want to give people the opportunity to make it their yeah. own. That's this is great. So yeah, so yeah, that's part of knitting. It's like the cut really, really beautiful. Yeah. It's so beautiful. So, All right. And so I have this, and I am sorry to the designer if I totally butcher your name. I had to look this up. Oh dang it! Hold on one second. Okay. So this is Garlic by Chantel, is it, it's, it's Bellal, Bellal, I, I can't even. Belisle? Belisle, Belisle. Belisle. Okay. Belisle. Oh. how would you pronounce it? Belisle. Belisle? Chantel Belisle? Yeah, because it is, it's you a European thing. Say confident. Yeah, confident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so confident. Like we all are like, yeah, that's it. That's what it is. Like 90% right there. I don't know. Thank goodness she's sitting somewhere over in Europe. It's it's on the Euro yeah, for. Stand up, Aaron. So right. this one was brought to our attention by a lovely friend oh, knitter. Oh, she's the flying yak. Yes. The flying yeah. yak. I love yes. her. So 
I go by the designer name because I don't know how many people do designer versus well, company names. Well, on Instagram, she's the Flying Yak. Yeah, yeah. And yeah I know the Flying her from Yak. There, so, okay, yeah. so the Flying Yak. So she has this awesome, like, shrug sweater. Yeah, how do you see around. it? Yeah, yeah that's so, super fun. And so on the back, it kind of comes to two Vs. Mm -hmm. But I love it. I it's love wonderful. it. Wonderful. It's super Guinness. chic. It yes. is. Yeah. Yeah. Guinness is super chic. Yes, in the colorway, it's Guinness and Trace Chic. It is a worsted weight. So this is the Spring Bell worsted. worsted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Watch it there. So, I don't want yes. you to fall. So yes, yeah, so that is that. And I loved it. I wanted something heavier to um, accommodate people who are looking for something in the worsted mm -hmm. weight to touch and feel and see how it lays. Awesome. But as well, it's just kind of a little bit more daring in shape. Like it's not classic lines, and that's what I kind of liked about it. Yeah, it's really cool. And I honestly love the V in the back of the neck. Um, the straight collar sometimes I think for some people it can be annoying, and it it kind of messes <laughs> with your hair. It messes yeah. with your hair. It can't mess with your hair. So no, but I absolutely love this design. It was really cool. Oh, but you could do yeah. something brighter, or you could do yeah. semi-solids. You can really yeah. you could just do one color through the whole Don't thing as well. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. I like the two colors. Yeah. Well, I like that this, speaking as a color phobic person, is really subtle. Yeah. Even though, you know, it's got color in there, but it's... Yeah. it's like our like whole it. spring line was a little bit more soft driven mm -hmm. because yeah. we feel like in a sea of really loud colors that are all around us right now, sometimes you just need to rest your eyes mm -hmm. on something beautiful and yeah. kind of delicate. So this and is inspired so, really yes. by a, a winter day, kind of out in the woods, and yeah. just this blue, you know, the beautiful blue, clear sky, and mm -hmm. yeah. soft trees. It's really beautiful. Wow. It's yeah, love it. Color. I also feel like that's like the color of like right before winter, when mm -hmm. there's still brown leaves on the yeah. trees, and then yes. like the sky is that color. I yeah. think it's beautiful. I'm a big cross-country skier, so that really inspires me when yeah. I go. So if there's a nice wow. blue sky, and there's a lot of birch trees around where I, where I go, and beautiful. you find a lot of inspiration yeah. from that. Yeah. And you are sporting. I, well, actually, I have to show this too because oh. these are the same two colors in Erin's sweater. Oh, oh look at them mixed but up. This one is a double slip stitch, so when they're marled together, you get a whole different kind of fabric, which oh, is really cool. That's really fun. Yeah. Oh, that is super yeah. fun. Fun to see that. Is that a cowl? This is going, yes, it's a cowl. <laughs> going to be. Future cowl. Okay. <laughs> Um, but I am wearing Stillwater by Marie Green. And I Yay! And what color is it? Grayish? This is grayish is the new black in our Spring Bell Awesome. Yeah. So this was a joy to knit. Which Loved was a total so surprise when you showed up in that because I didn't even know you were knitting. Yeah. I said, that's awesome. Did you like that when I came in the and I was like. She's like. <laughs> to see people in my sweaters. I don't know why I didn't think of that, but I was just so worried about my booth and people kept walking by going, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the Oscar Band. Because I plan to do it with the Oscar Band later today. So get ready for the Oscar Band. Okay. 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 I love it. I love it. It's so hysterical. It's what they do. And then now I'm like, oh my gosh, they must, someone must have my sweater because they're doing they're this. They're doing the dance. <laughs> I'm wearing your sweater dance. It's amazing. That whole like, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. He's got it. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I have to point out that we inadvertently are like, like we're totally wearing the matching. same color shoes. Yeah. Oh, I know. You guys are super cute. Like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Color. I have been party. to breakfast and I'm like pink and bright color and they're all like, Asian white. <laughs> like, hey, I, was like, I did have a gray cardigan, but she I did. took it off to put this yeah. on. It's a little too warm to wear this outside, but I just had I had to I wear it. Great, so. I think you guys yeah. brought the heat. Like you just like had heat waves since I you guys were here. I was not expecting it to be 80 degrees. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. I should have brought my swimsuit apparently. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. All right. So we talked a little bit about throwing or picking yesterday. Thrower or picker? Picker. Picker. Um, I'm a. a like continental ish thrower, like I throw with my left finger. Oh, yeah. Left. So I'm, I'm I'm more continental, but I'm like continental slash Irish production style because I prop the left needle and just work off of that. Oh. Yeah. So I, but I'm not not. Oh, a you're a left needle propper. Yeah, I'm a left needle propper. So you can see it. So I, I like can see. Little, she's like holding like, it. I'm like it's. You can't even see it because she's like propping it. The left needle doesn't it. move. Yeah, it's which is nice because actually it's a lot less movement on my hands. Oh, yeah. So there's, yeah, my left hand hardly does anything. It's just my little finger kind of. Well, I feel like you doing. basically combined like some of the best elements of like knitting styles into one. Thank you. Yeah. Instead so. of being told, 
what are you doing? That's <laughs> that's I, wrong. I would go to like my first time around other knitters. I didn't grow up with knitters. Yeah. Ex, you know, and my grandma lived far away, so I didn't know anybody else. So I get older and join knitting groups, and everyone stops and they're like, "What are you doing? What kind of knitting is that?" And I was like, "It's the knitting kind. I don't know. Good. Like I didn't even know the difference nope. yeah. until later. And then when I found out there were different methods, I was like, "Well, I'm not really exactly any of those. So I guess I just made up my own knitting." Mm -hmm. But it is kind of it's like the, a little, some it's little. It's the Marie method. It is. Yeah. It's the Marie method. I love it. <laughs> but it's more right. continental-ish. I love it. All right, throw her a picker. I'm a thrower because I, again, I learned to knit in New Zealand, and I, I actually am a left-handed person, and which is so crazy to me that, that you just are. Me I mean, you're, you're working more. And you're, you're working more. You have. You're, you're working this, and it's like the only thing you're doing. I just feel like. Knitting is not left or right handed. No, That's just, no. You're working with both hands, but I feel like with the left hand, I'm I'm doing more of the motion. All I have to do with my right hand is just control my tension on my yarn and just do my little throwing. Which part. I guess makes sense because when I'm doing yeah. this, all of my big movement is with my right hand, mm -hmm. and my left hand is okay. That makes sense. You're just holding it. I'm just, you're just holding yeah. it. It's, you're just doing minor movements, but yeah. I just feel like I have tried to pick, and it feels. Back and asterisk to me, and I just you have to knit how it's comfortable you do. for you. you do. Oh, and yes. I feel like I have better, like, and I don't say this because I'm a control freak, but control of the yarn. Absolutely. You're the no, boss. You need to have and control of the yarn. Like, for me, like, controlling the yarn with my left hand means it's very passive. Like, I actually don't tension my yarn, yeah. which is like a lot of people, are like, how do you tension your yarn? I'm like, my fist ten like yeah, holding it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that like pinky tension, yeah. and then yeah. but my right hand is doing all the work. So like yeah. I'm very like I can control each stitch yeah. this way, yeah. which is important because I wanted my fabric to be very even. Mm -hmm. So like that makes sense to me why I knit the way I do. Yeah, I always yeah. say I'm a pincher because I don't know. If you're a do, you, do you pinch? Do you pinch? I, I pinch. Do you pinch? I totally like, pinch. Like I pinch when, when I'm like when I do yeah. English style, well, I. I don't have to pinch yeah. just because it's probably See, I, like, <laughs> like, it's yeah. just like yeah. hybrid of like, yeah, because yeah. you're yeah. Like, here. But like, yeah. everybody does little nuances they in the knitting that makes it more efficient for them. Mm -hmm. And like, for me, just like, so I can't use my right hand. I've pinched off. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going back and forth. Yeah. You keep flashing this colorway. I can't stand it. <laughs> what is it? What is this colorway? This is um, Fire Dance. Oh my gosh. That swatch oh. is gorgeous. Why don't I know about Fire Dance yet? But you guys, oh. <laughs> just like they're all good. That's Beautiful. Why there's so oh many. my gosh! And I have to say, so the one thing is like Kelly and I, what we do sometimes is we create monsters. And this is a monster. Yeah. I love this color. Don't get me wrong, but dyeing it is. I made something I really, really fussy. Like you know, as much as we try to be creative and it's very creative color environment. You also have to be production minded. Yeah, and it's like we, to we do it. X amount yeah. in an hour, and this one has extra steps that makes it long. And oh. it was my own damn fault because this is what I created. <laughs> but I also feel like you have to, like, at some point as a dyer, like, I feel the same as, like, Give it here. when I'm I don't want to touch it. I love I feel it. like no, you have to do something crazy to just have fun with it with as a dyer. Steps. Like, you're like, yeah. I will probably never dye this that's color really, again, yeah. or probably yeah, never knit really... this, like, write this pattern up. Yeah. That's my case, but it's like, I want to do everything in this mm -hmm. pattern. And you're like, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this one is everything. I curse myself. myself everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really I'm sorry it takes you a long time, but my gosh, it's so beautiful. I will dye it, but there is, like, you know what? It's like, the extra step ones, we all kind of like, it's my turn to take on this. Yep. But like, we have a company yeah. who like, I want 26 of these. Like, okay, <laughs> I love you guys. Yeah. And that's why I'll yeah. do it with a smile on my face. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, Kelly that's and I really have funny. both like, I think a, a few of those, but I, you know what, I am very, heavy fist when it comes to dyeing and having very saturated it's colors. Funny because we've both been dyeing the same amount of time and I am very light, 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 light. She is like a I dye kinda, whisperer. I, I whisper she gets the dye She's a dye whisperer. <laughs> I can tell my but, it, but it takes that a little bit longer. Me, like, knowing your guys' personalities, I'm like, I'm like, I can feel this. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I developed Fireside Chat, but it's like has nine different colors, like, um, like we, we measure things out like you would cook, you get like, 12 tablespoons of purple in the <laughs> nightcap, you know, part of it. And so it's like, that's the kitchen sink yarn colorway because but it's I think like, that's, yeah. you guys are your combo though, because if you're doing the lighter stuff and you're doing saturated, yeah. you guys can be right between. Yeah, Boom. Exactly. And make, exactly. make fades happen. Yeah, so <laughs> exactly. So it's like, you know, it's We are the Laverne yeah. and Shirley. Um, yes. yes. Yeah. That is hysterical. <laughs> that is hysterical. That is so funny. Then, All right, throw her a picker. I am a picker. 
Thicker. Thicker all the way. I learned how to crochet first, so I think that's where I came from. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Big time thicker. I will. I do throwing when I do color work, yep. but it's, yeah. I don't enjoy it that much, but I will get through it. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many more questions for you. We could have like a five series podcast, but you know, like we got to cut our friends on the other side a little bit of a break. <laughs> so we just want to say thank you for being with us today. Yeah. Um, we'll have more about the retreat and Aaron's like, you know, doing my hair. You forgot this kind of thing. So we did forget something. Um, the flying needles, we did a knit along here of the find your fade. And the grand prize for everybody who participated in the knit along and who let me take their picture and who posted pictures and who posted on Ravelry is like this two hundred dollar pack of yarn, which is gorgeous. provided by three Irish girls. Like, look, like it's no joke. These are full skeins. This wonderful three Irish girls needle gauge this in here, is beautiful. and I believe this is all Adorn Lux, and I think yep. this is Seven Summits. So the, the winner may not get this one. I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? Oh no! It's Prince. <laughs> you gotta do the Prince. That is, oh, I, I want to be your lover. Oh yeah. And I would die for you in there. Yeah. Raspberry beret. Baby, I'm a star. Baby, I'm a star. We are very, very musically inspired, big time, and wow. it's, it's a whole. It's many genres. I mean, you have windows cry on the table. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Space Oddity and Rocket or a Man on the and Man on the Moon. moon. Yep. Yeah. So we we love we well, we love our friends, but we so. love music as well. So Aaron's holding the winner. I'm holding the winner here, people. So da 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 da. Oh wait, 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 wait. Okay, the winner is Joan Menarek. Oh, very good, Menarek. Joan, yay, Joan! Thank you, everybody who participated in our knit along, and actually. We are launching another another knit along on Wednesday. So our friend Josh here, who designed the pattern for us, the oscillate, we're kicking that off on Wednesday. Um, the Flying Needles has the pattern here exclusively until September 1st. And then, so if you want it, you have to go through us, give us a call here at the shop. Um, you can find that link in the bio. And so thank you for being with us. Bye everybody. Bye.